Yo, we are back, fam. We are in the studio, just jamming out, enjoying it. We just got done talking about chemtrails and how we need to really be focused on our health and wellness. Now, I told you, we're going into death decoded. This is going to lead to a lot more uh, different episodes, but this is where we're going to start. There's a lot of things in our environment that hurt us. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, etc. But in Death Decoded, we're going to learn about one that you might not have been thinking about. And so when I did this particular video uh, and put it together, I was really amazed at some of the things that I learned. So as we go through this, I'm going to narrate. It's me talking on the video, but we're going to narrate through it. You hit on uh, the third leading cause of death in the United States. Yeah. And I'm sure most of us could figure it's either heart related or cancer or uh, uh, diabetes, things like that. Can you clue us into what that is and why? Uh, yeah. Okay. And thank you for asking that because this is the 10,000 pound gorilla. All right. Here we are. So this is a. Uh, Dr. Peter Gideon, um, and he is uh, the author of The MD Emperor Has No Clothes. You can find him at drgideon.com. And he is going to tell us what is the third leading cause of death. Not the first, not the second, but the third the third reason why most Americans die. In the room that nobody's talking about. The third leading cause of death, as published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, is MD-directed treatments. This means you go to a medical doctor, an MD, he gives you a treatment, and you die from it. Oh! The United States... Oh! What did he just say? He just said the third leading cause of death is MD directed care. You go to a doctor, he gives you treatment, and you die. How, how in the world is that possible? Let's find out. Department of Health and Human Services. 15,000. 15,000. Medicare patients a month are killed by MD treatment. 15,000. goes to jail. A handful of terrorists fly two planes into the <laughs> Twin Towers. 3,500 people die and we go to war. But 15,000 people a month are killed by medical doctor treatments and we don't bat an eyelash. This is because we have been that is ridiculous. 15,000 people every single month in MD-directed care. Now, I'm, um, I've been around long enough to know that a lot of grandparents um, had bags of pills that they would be taking you know, in certain families in our community. I mean, literally, they would have to carry all their medications in a one gallon or two gallon Ziploc bag. And that's how many pills they were taking every day for this and for that and for this and for that. And what he's saying is that those people that are on Medicare that are taking all those pills out of the totality of all of them, the majority of them pass away and pass away before the ripe old age. Why does that happen? And, you know, why is nobody thinking about that? Let's listen.
I don't want to say brainwashed. That's not the correct term. But we have been, for the last hundred years, um, kind of led into this false belief. You know, I think it was Marcus Welby that started it, that the medical doctor is king and knows everything about everything. And really, you need to just shut up and follow your medical doctor's advice. Most people in the United States have no idea at all of no the idea. history of the evolution of medicine in the United States. History? In the early 1900s. The history, the history and evolution of the medical industry. That means basically when you go to the doctor, how did that establishment get set up? How did all that happen? You know, the office, the doctor, the medical um, education that they have there. How did all that start? And that's what we're talking about right now. How did your doctor get his education? Wouldn't that be important? You would want to know where your physicians are being educated, right? Into the rabbit hole we go. This is how your doctors have been educated. This is wellness for us. It was a relatively level playing field between the chiropractors, the osteopaths, the homeopaths, and the MDs. In 1915, 1920, there was something called the Flexner Report. 1915, 1917, the Flexner Report. We got to remember that. Remember that for later on, the Flexner Report. The Carnegie Corporation funded this man named Abraham Flexner. He went all around the country and t he went on stagecoach and train and horseback. This was before the interstate highway system, right? took Flexner five years to do this. He went all around the country and did an inventory of all of the medical schools that prescribed drugs. He brought the list back to the Carnegie's, who own drug companies, and then the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers gave millions of dollars of free money to the medical schools and hospitals in the United States that were prescribing drugs. He founded his own school in 1890, and if we look back, we'll see that he was actually 24 years old when he founded his own school. It says that he yeah, yeah, uh, that studied birthday. at Harvard and at John Hopkins. Got a birthday uh, right there, 24 years old. highly successful, and uh, that it had no form John of curriculum, Dewey, no Charles form Elliot. of grading systems, no examinations and kept no achievement record. All right. So what are we talking about here? So and we're going to learn this a little bit more as the video goes on. I kind of got skipped around with my video here, but. Dr. Gideon just told us that the Flexner report was used by Carnegie and Rockefeller to modify the medical industry, and they paid money to these hospitals. Now, if you look right here, it clearly says that the laboratories um, had no curriculum, no grades, no system of examination, no grading systems, etc. This is just the beginning. So right. my question is, number one, how much Harvard and John Hopkins do you get if you're 24 years old when you start your own school? That's a good question. That's a good question. How much John Hopkins training can you get at 24 years old? I'm not sure how many of you would want a 24 year old in 1917 cutting you open and trying to figure out what was going on with your heart, with your liver, with your kidneys. Let's keep going. 24 years old, opened his own school, no training, no, 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 no curriculum, no grading, no system of achievement, no records. Okay. This is the beginning of the shaping of the medical system that you're in today. 
How do you judge success if there's no grading system, no curriculum, no examination, and no records of achievement? How do you judge if you're being successful or not? It's a good question. How do you judge if you're being successful or not? Well, but with what we're listening to right now from Dr. Gideon, it's obvious that they don't. They don't judge in the medical industry if it's successful or not. Okay. They don't take about, they don't take how many people have died versus how many have gotten well and do the math and say, okay, this is better. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Medicine in this matrix is a science. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You just have to take the good with the bad and keep on moving. That's science. That's the way they do it. Let's keep listening. Let's continue. It says that he went and uh, visited 155 schools in the United States and in Canada. And out of the 155 schools, that these were medical schools, chiropractors, medical practitioners, holistic doctors, um, people that are giving out herbs and supplements. He suggested that 120 of those schools be closed. And whoop, there it is. Okay. This is the beginning of the end. For any type of true health and wellness. Okay. With the money that was given to him, he reported that 120 plus of these medical professionals and professional situations should be canceled because they couldn't live up to his expectations. The 24-year-old who got money and went on, had his own school, didn't keep no grades, no records, no examinations, and then was given a bunch of money to run around and tell every other doctor that they didn't know what they were talking about and they needed to stop practicing and let him and Carnegie and the Rockefeller take over. The end. After the Flexner report, there was no more level playing field in the United States. And the MDs started a juggernaut that's taken off. Most people in the United States think that the predominant medicine here, MD directed pharmaceutical medicine, we think that those guys are top dog because their therapeutics are better than the no. homeopaths or the naturopaths or the chiropractors. It's not. Right. They're in the driver's seat because of political and financial coalitions that were built at the turn of the century that most people have no idea of at all. And it's a gigantic problem. And I, I mean, it's crazy, right? It's the third leading cause of death. And yet, when the government makes noise about messing with people's insurance, everybody freaks out. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother thing to talk about, isn't it? Because what is medical insurance? When you buy medical insurance, what are you doing? You're betting that you're going to get so sick, you will not be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right. And then, so you pay good money every month to gain access to a system of medicine that's the third leading cause of death in the United States. Think about that for a minute, people. Now, that is exactly what we talk about when we talk about the matrix, a system that is already set up to fail you, but it charges you anyway, making you think that you're going to get something special, that you're going to get something that's extraordinary. Now, I'm not saying that medical insurance is not a good thing to have. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get medical insurance. But relying on that 
versus taking care of ourselves. That's the disconnect that we have when it comes to wellness for us. Yeah, medical insurance is there for, you know, if I break my leg, if I get into a car accident, if I fall off a building, okay? Um, not for me just not taking care of myself and needing to have to go to the doctor every single other month because I'm sick about something. Medical directed care is not where you want to be when it comes to your health and well-being. As we've just learned, the Flexner Report changed the entire medical landscape. Let's finish up right quick with Dr. Gilden. Gilden. We need our heads examined, quite frankly. That's why we give, Dr. Wallach and myself collectively, we give 400 free lectures a year. And we're building a grassroots network because people don't know this. I mean, people I come to my lectures and they look at me and say, couch potatoes live longer, <laughs> medical doctors are the third leading cause of death. You know, what's going on here? Why do we have a social agenda? Because people are suffering needlessly. You wouldn't believe, yeah. as God is my witness, you would not believe the things that I've seen people recover from in holistic medicine. It's, the body's ability to fix itself is remarkable. And most of the mm -hmm. time, all that the body needs to do that is the raw materials that it needs to do that. And we need to stop eating food that's hurting the body. You know, if you put diesel fuel in an unleaded engine, even if it's a brand new Ferrari, it's going to run like crap if it runs at all. And there's nothing wrong with the car. It just had the wrong fuel. Facts. It's the Facts. Same with the human body. You give the human body the raw materials that it needs, clean up the diet, Superman. Bars. Superwoman. And you know, if you don't Great get bars. the status, then at least your blood pressure normalizes, at least your arthritis goes away, at least your anxiety and panic attacks go away, and you can sleep through the night. You might not be Superman, but at least your panic attacks will go down. You won't have headaches. Your stomach won't be hurting every day. Third leading cause of death in America is MD-directed care. A lot of your grandparents and your parents may be going to the doctor right now or diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or obesity, you may be able to help them by just teaching them and showing them how to eat more fruits and vegetables, how to drink more water, how to get out of the house a little bit and just exercise or walk around the block. It doesn't have to be anything strenuous and crazy. It just takes a little bit of love uh, to get that person motivated. I hope this episode motivated you to take care of yourself as you've just learned the third leading cause of death is MD-directed care. Don't go away. We'll be right back in our next episode. We're going to go into the kitchen and we're going to find out how can we keep ourselves safe. We're going to go back into refrigerator rehab because I know a lot of you want to get in the kitchen. You want to start cooking. You're interested in getting in your dishes and your meals in order. So stay tuned. Let's jam out for a couple of minutes and we'll go right back into it with another episode of Refrigerator Rehab. You're listening to the Wellness for Us podcast. I'm for the trainer, your wellness host and motivator.